Welcome back to my channel. I am Sleepy Bug, and today we are going to be playing day two of Kid at the Back. As always, I'm very excited to see our friend Soul. Soul started off being the one with my heart, but slowly but surely, Hugo. Uh, he has kind of he has kind of swept me up and off my feet so do 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 with that what you will day two the kingdom i'm fine i'm not nervous the sun setting by the horizon colors the grassy field into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across my face. Your ever beloved home, the tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while you were talking while they talked with your father, your only family member left. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate the people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time. I promise I can pay up. This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose this farmland. We've given you enough chances, Mr. Bug. If you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. I don't know what voice that was. The loud ringing of the school bell ran across the hallway, making you jerk out of your thoughts. Students come out through their classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. Oh, hi, Carol. Look at that cutie pie. You sat up and met face to face with Crow. Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. You let out a yawn. You rubbed your eyes as you looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats, and it is now lunchtime. <sighs> what did I miss? Nothing important. Though, if you're having doubts, I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks, Crow. You're a lifesaver. Anything for you, Sleepy. You recall the little dream you had. You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch, popping a few joints before you got up and went off to your classroom with Crow in tow. You meet up with your group of friends, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers, Brittany coming along behind them and Jess. You waved at them. It's the squad! Good noon to you all. Regards, Daryl, how was class? Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more or less minor and I'll be out of here. Gio just shrugged, a hand in his hoodie pocket while the other on his phone. To at least do something in our major today though, which I'm glad about. More papers, but at least it's something. Enough about papers. How about the Halloween party? Any ideas for a costume yet? As they talk with each other, at the corner of your eye, you noticed a familiar figure. It's Sol. He came out of the class and another person came afterwards behind him, seemingly bored out of his mind. I'm gonna save. Join Sol, call Sol over, stay with their group. I'm gonna go join Sol. <laughs> oh, um, Crow, is it okay if I leave? I have somewhere to be at. Is that so? There's a slight disappointment in his voice, but he lets you continue on. I yeah, sorry I couldn't hang out. Nonsense. I'll see you after lunch instead, then sleepy. If you're ever interested, of course. Of course. 
You give Crow one last smile before going over to where Soul is towards the two individuals. They seem to be in deep conversation. Soul noticed your presence and stopped talking, his attention now on you. His companion noticed the change in Soul's demeanor and followed his gaze as it landed on you. The shorter male meted you with a smile. You turned to Hugo beside him and greeted him as well. You give him a grin. You turn to Hugo beside him and greeted him as well. He gives you a grin. Hey there. <laughs> Thanks again for taking care of this guy. And you forgot to tell me what Soul looks like. Hiko just let out an awkward chuckle. He just winked at you. Oh, but you didn't miss his handsome face, did you? Hugo teased, grabbing Soul's jaw and showed it off, earning him an irritated groan from the tall individual's lips. Hey. You are embarrassing. Sorry about him letting you take over his responsibility. Hugo pouted, letting go of Soul. You shook your head with a slight giggle. It's not a problem. I'm glad I got to meet you in the process. Hugo gave Soul a teasing nudge to his ribs, causing him to bend over a bit before rubbing Hugo's head, taking advantage of his height compared to Hugo's. So anyway, what are you up to, Sleepy? Oh, I just saw you both and I wanted to greet you. More importantly, you checked Soul's face. He seemed to look better than yesterday. Are you alright now, Soul? Huh? Oh. Yeah, I'm feeling quite better. Thankfully, the bruise didn't last that long to leave a mark. Wait, what? What bruise? You got injured? Nothing for you to worry about. Look at his face. I'm in love with Hugo. Okay. Hugo just gave him a worrisome look. Soul insisted that he shouldn't think about it, making his friend sigh and leave the topic. Anyway, we're planning to go to the rooftop today and eat lunch there. The weather's doing better unlike yesterday. You want to tag along with us, Sleepy? You guys aren't fan of the cafeteria? Upon mentioning the cafeteria, Soul shivered as Hugo gave a small chuckle. Sunny here isn't a huge fan of the noise there. Let's get going, shall we? Sure. You sure love your rooftops? Why, yes I do. He said with a smile filled with pride on his face. Hugo walked to his usual spot and got himself seated on a bench that you somehow never saw before. Soul followed, a large box wrapped in his hands that he caught your interest. Sit besides. I like it. I, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna save. That's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna sit beside Soul. Yeah, this is, this is my Soul route, not my Hugo route. I'm gonna sit beside Soul. Soul noticed you from the corner of his eye, the edge of his lips turning upwards. You pointed to the box nestled in Soul's hands. Is that your lunch, Soul? You can say that. As Soul unwrapped the cloth, it showed you three bento boxes. He took out the first bento box on top before giving the other to Hugo. Hugo happily accepted the box, uttering a small thank you to Soul before taking out his chopsticks. Hugo opens the container and lets out an odd sound, his eyes sparkling, drool slowly drops down the corner of his lips. You actually listened, and did you cut the tiny sausages into octopuses? Keep your voice down, it's ringing in my ears. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Hugo gently placed the bento on his lap before rummaging through his phone. He flipped it horizontally and opened his phone's camera. A small click of the camera sound was heard before he placed it down. Hugo took the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he keeps gushing about. Oh my. <gasps> we need to wife up soul. We need to wife up soul. Forget college. Does he need a housewife? I don't mind wearing a, a little apron and that's it. Yeah, 
Isn't it adorable, Sleepy? There you see our various ranges of food with rice shaped to match a moth, seaweed to design the face along with using a cabbage leaf to form its wings. Right below the moth are many sausages shaped like octopuses. Wonderfully cut carrots were made into little stars and squeezed beside stuffed shiitake mushrooms. The egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip looked delicious. I almost feel too bad to eat it. Itadakimasu! <laughs> Without wasting another second, Hugo started digging in. Did you make this by yourself, Sol? You couldn't say that. Sol answered, opening his own container. Within it was just a regular ham and cheese sandwich. Sol- oh my god. He took out one piece, but before he could take a bite, he turned to you. Have you eaten, Sleepy? How about you let you guys to make sure you always eat and everything? Uh, yeah, I'm a bad influence because I don't do it. No, but we're gonna pretend I did. No, no, I haven't. Soul's eyes went wide and Hugo gave you a look. Before you knew it, Soul took out another box, the last bento box, before giving it to you. You can have this, it's an extra. Why do you have an extra? I didn't know how, like how it looked, but I figured I can let Hugo finish it. It's a waste of ingredients. Uh, you don't have to do that, so really. No, I insist. Oh, for crap's sake, just eat the same box. Hugo, <laughs> Hugo clearly had enough of the back and forth banter suggested before continuing on his box. Sol hesitated at first. He eventually took out a spoon and fork and handed one for me. Take a bit from the box or tease him. Let's mess with Sol. We gotta tease him. <laughs> you declined his offer for the utensil, making him raise a brow in confusion. You don't want the spoon? Or do you prefer chopsticks? Look at his... I love him. Look at his face. He looks so exhausted. He can sleep on my plush thighs. They're the god's natural pillow. Nothing of the sort. Then what is it? I want you to feed me. That nearly took Sol out. <laughs> Hugo gave you a side eye, a judgmental look on his face as he stopped eating. He scooted away a bit from the two of you before returning to his meal. <laughs> really? Right in front of my salad? So, however, was nervous for a bit, his eyes still transfixed on yours. He still couldn't believe what you he just heard. <laughs> Are you just going to keep staring at her or what? Shut up. Ow. I'll feed her. So gripped the spoon on his hand, taking a few pieces from the bento box before turning to you. His eyes averted from you, a wild blush on his face as he raised the spoon to your face. His hand was shaking a bit, seemingly nervous. You took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing well. It's delicious and fresh. It's amazing. So this is really good. So nodded along with you, food stuffed in one cheek like a hamster. I know, right? You'd honestly be surprised. So? Making lunch for Hugo. You make a great house husband. <laughs> you make a great house husband. <laughs> Soul's eyes widen at your declaration. You really think so? I really do think so. <laughs> Nah, we ain't letting this slide this time, so hold on. <laughs> Do you want to get married to me? <laughs> so is definitely house husband material sleepy. He can cook, he can clean, but I ain't tell you got this ring. He can do anything. <laughs> I'd rather not be your own personal butler. That was a compliment. The two banter, but you can't help looking at Sol. His eyes have a hint of sparkle in them. It seemed brighter. Hugo eventually finished his own box, tucking away the box, wrapping it back up. 
Hugo stood up from the bench, stretching his limbs, walked a few steps ahead, and looked back at the both of you. Is this what you guys do every day? You question, making Hugo turn to you. Or at least, when you both get together? What do you mean? You mean still giving me lunch? He just keeps forgetting his own. Hugo pouts. <laughs> and you never finish yours, so I do the honors of ever finishing good food. Thank you very much. Those bento box art. What inspired them, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? Shut it, Go-Go. Go-Go? Oh, now we're using nicknames, Sunny. How sweet of you. You see here, Sleepy? My old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. I am in love with Hugo hyping this man up. He said, just so you know, Sleepy, just so you know, he's husband material, he can cook, and he's, he's a tortured artist. He's a tortured artist. And then all everybody's panties just drop. But he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. And he really loves cute things like... Hugo turned back to Sol. Sol just stared back at him, his arms crossed. What was the name of your plush tour, Sonny? Like heck, I'm answering that. Boo. He owns a plush horse? Soul owns plushies? By now, Soul's face is beet red as he tries the bento box back up. He stood up from his seat, going over to where Hugo was. You stood up as well and followed along the duo. That's so cute! You keep surprising me more and more, Soul. He said nothing as he fixed his choker, the red going up to his ears at your compliment. Looks can be deceiving. This begs you to wonder. Why do people never bother to notice him? Why don't people want to get to know him? Maybe they just never gave him the chance because of how he looks. Not to mention his, uh, his intimidating height. But in the end, he's just a gentle giant. I love him. But then Hugo stopped talking, the wind picking up a bit as he went by the railings. He leaned in and placed his elbows on the cold iron surface as he looked down. Curious, you approached him and looked down to where his attention was. And there you see a group of unfamiliar people. They look so fancy. They look rich, dangerous. It doesn't help that the adult with them, you're guessing a teacher, has an eye patch on his right eye. Tch. High class mugs. So lets out a disgusted look at the group of well dressed students. He didn't spare them a second glance and went back to the bench. High class? Uh, you don't know about the hierarchy, Sleepy? N no, it's not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. How come I've never heard or seen one of them throughout the school years here? Hugo just made a low chuckle, his gaze still fixated on the group below him. His eyes narrow, just like Sol, he clearly doesn't like them either. I don't blame you. No one likes to talk about them anyway. Not us getting Hugo CGI. I wasn't ready. He glares at the group below them. The school building isn't actually the real thing. Wait, what? But the school map clearly says that the address is. That's where they actually fool you. You might think you got it right, but we are sorted based on our background. The real school building? Way further than where we are. And their campus is 10 times bigger and better. They get proper classes, have better equipment, everything is just better. Here? We only get the short end of the stick. The afterthought, if you will. If I have to guess, the well-off are in the main building? That's right. Son of a duke. Daughter of a businessman. 
Heck, as long as you're rich, you're in. Your chances for having better education rest. If you're part of the high class, then you'll have a better chance of living a successful and stable life. But don't we have students here who are like super rich? You remember Jess being one. She's the daughter of a businessman. But how come she's not part of the higher class? There are some who end up shifting down and moved out of our building. Either they fell a class or got a violation. They didn't want that type to st of stain on their reputation, so they sent them here. Of course, some didn't appreciate it. They see us as someone lower than them, hence. Hugo looks at Sol. The man set the said man too busy sketching on a sketch pad to notice. Oh. They have to fight the weak to feel something, huh? They sounded like nothing but bullies. How come someone didn't set up to complain? Hugo, however, just laughed at you, as if you told him a very funny joke before shaking his head. If only it was that easy. His laugh eventually died down as he scratched his head. Actually, sleepy. In the city, no one really gives a crap. Money is the only thing revolving around this city. You got no cash, you're done for. Which is why people like us, he looks at you, are desperate to get into higher class. If you so dare to complain, he paused as if contemplating the words he was about to say. Judging from his entire demeanor, it's not good. Instead, he sent you a look. His once soft sky blue eyes are now sharp, like icicles piercing down on you. You're better off dead. Hugo glanced one last time below. The group of high class students are now gone, before averting his gaze on somewhere else. He lets out a sigh. But that's the really sad reality here. The attention is good, great even. Your chances to get a stable life and even have a knock to stardom is high once you're part of the high class, much less graduate there. Ask about the hierarchy. How come I've never heard of the hierarchy before? It's like a hidden thing, but that's not what we call it. The school, no, this entire city. It's like a fighting pit. Whoever is the most powerful has a better chance of living a good life here. No, people come to this school to gain a second chance in life, but to achieve that, you have to make yourself well known. Make them think you're worth their time. If not, you're on your own. I got nothing else to ask. I do have something else to ask. Why are you so beautiful, Hugo? What's your hair routine? Are you single? I just want to add you to my mini list of loves. <sighs> the city is corrupt. He muttered under his breath. Which makes me question, Sleepy. How are you able to get in the city? No, the better question is, why did you enroll in this school? If you don't mind me asking, that is. You're clearly not from here. And that he was right. Your eyes widen at the words that the well-dressed man said. No, I refuse. Sleepy, you're not taking this farm. My home. You cut your father's words off, marching towards the tall man with a lot and heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raised a brow at you, raising his hand to halt his men. His deep magenta eyes then turned to look straight in your eyes. It sent a chill down your spine. Well then, little missy, how about this? If you manage to pay off your debt in the next five years, I'll let you off the hook and I'll let you keep your land. Five years? You can handle that. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. Uh-uh. 
He tutted, waving a finger in front of your face. He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. A mischievous smile appears on his handsome features. That's a very specific line. <laughs> his handsome features? We're gonna meet this man, and he's gonna be one of our friend's uh, fathers or a love interest. But I have some conditions you have to meet. You went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with the sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The city? But we can't even afford to take her to college. What more the city? Your father interrupted. The man's eyes moved sideways to meet his. His figure still fixated on you. No need to worry. She'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for her education and a place to stay. The tall man lets out a laugh, his head thrown back a bit, as if he'd just heard a funny joke. See, I'm not that cruel. His eyes turn to you. However, in return, I want you to pay off your debt. I don't care what methods. A dark smile appeared on his face. It sent a shiver down your spine. Legal or illegal, as long as you reach the amount. If not, will. You have to say goodbye to your little farmland. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eye that was telling you that that's not all. But he did not elaborate any further. You bit your lip. You turned to look at your father. His eyes were clearly telling you to decline. There was something about this man that screams dangerous. But you were too desperate to lose your home. Your only home. So, what do you say, sleepy? The tall man's gaze still fixated on you, waiting for your answer. Do you accept? You recall the aftermath of your dream this morning, a sour look on your face as you bit your lip. Hugo takes notice of this. He paused for a bit, trying to read your gloomy expression. Let me guess, it's something you can't avoid. Honestly, I don't know. My father never really discussed as to why we were in debt. But I was so desperate to not only lose my home, I need to make it up to the higher class no matter what. Three jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. This was my last year in this cursed university and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo eyes are still on you. You realize you haven't answered his question yet. Uh, my family owns a business. You finally speak, making Hugo perk his eyebrows in curiosity. What business does your family have? Oh, well, we own a few farms. Sounds nice. I'd love to be out of the city once in a while. He gave you a small smile. Yeah, some might say it's boring, but it's not. You get to pet horses and cows. Well, you should really invite Soul over then, if ever. That guy loves horses. But that means you're long away from home. Don't you miss it? A little bit. Not at all. A little bit, not at all. A little bit, not at all. A little bit. I miss it a little bit. A little bit. That's alright. It's normal to feel a little homesick. I heard great things about this city. About this school. Hugo remained quiet, listening to you as you went on. If I can manage to come on top, and may be part of the higher class like you said, then I can maybe save my family's farm. Hugo's arms are now crossed. He didn't say anything as he looked at you. He lets out a chuckle. <laughs> you remind me of her. Like her? Uh, I'm rambling. Don't mind me. <laughs> uh, having caught Rand handed, he waved his hands face not red as cherry as it reached his ears just then you felt a presence behind you turning around you're met with soul his glare is stingy and directed at hugo however didn't mind it probably used to it it's almost time we should head back all right all right with nothing else to do the three of you left the rooftop as you were walking down the stairs however you felt your foot slip you missed a step Sleepy. Thankfully, Sol grabbed your waist before you could fall off the stairs as he studied you. Whoa, are you alright there, Sleepy? I yeah. 
Thank you, soul. Careful next time. Sheesh, the school and its bad architecture. Also one of the few flaws here. The stairs are all wonky. That's also why it's forbidden to go up here. We're troublemakers, though. <laughs> Hugo chuckles as he went down the stairs, watching his step as he did so. The arm is still secured around your waist, and it seemed like he wasn't letting go until you're all on stable ground. This time, I'm gonna sit in between them. You pointed at the box nestled in Soul's hands. Is that your lunch, Soul? You can say that. I could sit between them, but like it was the same. It just went straight to the lunch, so I'm gonna sit next to Hugo this time. Hugo greeted you with a smile, so gave Hugo a small glare. The male just feigned ignorance to the glare his friend is sending him. You pointed at the box nestled in Soul's hand. You been sleepy? Yeah, I have. I'm a good noodle, and I make sure that I eat more than just water for lunch. Hugo stopped gobbling down on his bento box. Soul gave him a disgusted look. <laughs> with the use of his chopsticks, he pointed at you. You should try it. Here, you can have some of my- I have another one made, thank you. <laughs> Soul stopped Hugo before he could finish his sentence. Hugo shrugged before continuing his endeavor on the bento box. I love them. Soul set down his sandwich before taking out the third bento box. I didn't like how it turned out. It was a waste of ingredients. Figured I could give it to Hugo and let him finish it. Soul opened his the last box. And there you were greeted with the same design as Hugo's bento, only a bit overcooked. Soul was lumped down, quite embarrassed at his poor performance. It was adorable either way. You made this? Yes. It's something the matter, is it not to your liking? I can give you my sandwiches. Maybe I can make one for you. N no, there's nothing wrong with it. Soul stopped rambling. You gently took the bento box from him, your hands brushing against his in the process, making him blush. I just never thought you'd be the type to make this type of food art. I think it's quite unique and amazing. Thanks. Well, better eat that before I swipe it off your hands. I love Hugo. Not on my watch. Hugo just laughed. You chuckled. Soul rolled his eyes, taking his sandwich before taking a bite out of it. You accepted the bento box and settled it in your own lap. You took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing well. It was delicious and fresh. It's amazing. Soul, this is really good. Bell nodded along with you, food stuffed in his one cheek like a hamster. He eventually took a spoon and fork and handed one to you. Um, take a bite from the bento box. Accepting the spoon, you scoop up one bit of rice and cut off a piece of the octopus-shaped sausage. You took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing well. It was delicious and fresh. Soul? Ask about making lunch for Hugo. You cooked for Hugo like a house husband. That's adorable, Soul. You two are like a married couple. House husband? Married? <laughs> to him? Soul points at Hugo with a face that asks if you're serious. Hugo's eyes sparkle in return. Hugo gave Soul big puppied eyes, <laughs> blinking rapidly. Soul grimaces. I'd rather jump off a cliff than be his personal butler, much less spouse. Aww. Now don't be mean, sonny, honey. I'm fine. Soul clasped both of his ears over his hand and groaned as he cringed. Hugo just laughed at him and turned to you. How about you, sleepy? Do you ever see yourself settling down with someone? You thought for a bit. I'm honestly not sure. Soul's hands were off of his ears and now settled in his lap as you said that. He remained quiet, his lips quivering as if to say something. But he pushed it down and stared at the sandwich he forgot. What about you, Soul? Do you plan on settling down? Eyebrows raised at your inquiry. He looked away and onto the cloudy sky above. I want to. I'd love to, especially if it's the one I love the most. His gaze met yours when he uttered the words, the one. It sent a shiver down your spine. Blood rushed to your cheeks and you tore your gaze away from his eyes. You both are so cheesy. Sheesh. Hugo interrupted, earning him a groan from Soul. You just chuckled. Couldn't help the one last look Soul gave you one last time. The sound of the bell ringing throughout the hallway echoes through, signaling the next start of the next classes for some. 
you go groans. I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my archery coach. He does archery? This isn't good. <laughs> Why don't you skip then? Hugo's eyes popped open. It became bright like a light bulb just popped out on in his head. Still knows exactly what that looks means. Don't t I'm going to skip class. <laughs> Forget this school. They're gonna treat us badly. Then let's be the bad guys. He's such a bad influence. He's like a little menace. We love our short game. Hugo said with a mischievous look on his face. Soul just sighs. He then turns to look at you, seemingly waiting for your response. The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is with Crow and art history. But then again, your art teacher will probably do the same boring s introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? I'm gonna save is what I'm gonna do. I'm in danger. Be a menace. Let's skip class. Hugo lets out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up. Soul gives you a cheeky smile of his own. But how do we do that though? Obviously we can't go through the entrance since it's closed and guarded. I know a way. Look at their faces. Absolute menaces. <laughs> they, they're like, we're pros at this, don't worry. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> Without wasting any more time, Soul leads the way going through the backside of the school near the gardens. The edges, of course, were barricaded with a tall iron fence. Soul finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this hole, Soul? He did. I did. <laughs> I love Hugo. Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Soul waits for you first before following after. The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs, the leaves falling as you passed them by. The red and orange leaves scattered around and making some of its way in your uniform before you eventually made it out and met with pavement. So, where do we go? Hugo thought for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly, he lets out a gasp, scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Soul's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller male. Sherlock Holmes is out! My ears. Oh yeah? Is that the detective movie I keep seeing on the television? I thought it wouldn't come out until next week. Did I set the date wrong? With that, Hugo started sprinting, leaving you and Soul behind. For the love of... Soul placed his hands on his hips before walking to where Hugo ran off to as you followed. I wouldn't mind being Eiffel Towered with these both of them. I said that out loud. Hugo kept tapping away on his phone. His shoulders went slump. Guess he didn't get the wrong date. Shoving his phone back in his pocket, he turned to you and Soul. He clasped his hands together and pulled the biggest puppy dog eyes you've ever seen. We gotta watch it! Can we, Sleepy? Can we, Sunny? You can go ahead and watch the movie. I'm going to roam the arcade while you're at it. Hugo pouted. His eyes went half-lidded and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. But it's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please. So, however, basing off his expression, isn't in the mood. <laughs> Hugo gives up and turns to you. How about you, Sleepy? Would you like to watch the movie with me? The tickets and the food on me, of course. How could you do this to me? I can't choose between both 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 best boys. You know what I can do is I can save. And then do best boys. <laughs> Not in that way. Sure, Jan. Let's go to the arcade first. <laughs> I was supposed to be like movie with Hugo. Let's go to the arcade first. Hugo shrugs. All right, go on your little impromptu date. Besides, I don't want to be a third wheel either way. D date? You're the one who decided we should sip class and do whatever we want. Yeah, and I want to watch a movie. Well, don't let me stop you two. Hugo stuck his tongue out at Seoul, and the said male only rolled his eyes. Well, I'll be heading in now. I'll just give you guys a call when, on where to meet. Sure. You and Hugo parted ways. He gave you both a wave before heading into a different direction. Soul turns to you. 
Should we get going, sleepy? Yes! Date with Saul, date with Saul. The flashing neon lights of the arcade's interior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ears. I've never been here before. Is this place new? Not really. It's just hidden within the city. I see, I see. Do you get out a lot, Saul? You seem to know places. I know places because I get my butt dragged by Hugo. Is that so? You laughed. Sol just shrugged as he shook his head. He took out a few coins from his pocket before handing it to you. They were tokens. So, which one are you going for first? Wow, you came prepared. As always. Come on. Sol holds out his hand and you accept it. He held it tight with a light squeeze as you and him roamed the arcade. Anything for you, Sol. You and Sol went and played multiple arcade games. Some you win, and some he does. But you often get the feeling he lets you win for the sake of you winning. <laughs> Come on, Sol, this is the fifth time I won. Ain't no way you're this bad. <laughs> Maybe you're just that good, Sleepy. You flatter me. Just as you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you ran out of tokens. Sol takes notice of this, of course, and gave out some of his to you. I'll go to the counter and grab a few more tokens. You don't mind staying here for a bit, right? Oh, how much should I pay you for your tokens? It's on me. Don't worry about it. Wait here. Yes, daddy. Giving you one last look, he hurriedly went to the counter. You looked around the area. The dinging sounds from the various machines filled the arcade. From the corner of your eye, you spot a claw machine. Maybe playing a few games would it hurt. Going to the claw machine, you check the contents inside. A cat plushie, a Shiba Inu plushie, and a horse plushie. If there was a cow plushie, I love you so, but you would not be getting your horse plushie that I'm about to get you. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. I'm getting him another horse plush. You remember how Sol likes horses. Maybe you can try to win one for him. These are his tokens after all. You took out some of the tokens Sol gave to you and sorted one into the coin slot. The machine whirls to life as you take the joystick in your left hand while hovering it on the red button on your right. You were focused, eyeing the claw in its position, trying to align it with the horse plush. The claw takes hold of the plush. Your eyes widen as you cross your fingers hoping it catches it. But you were interrupted with a sudden smack on your butt. What? You jerked and turned around. What the heck? Well, 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 what do we have here? You turned around and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like those typical spoiled rich kids you see in the movies. His hair a bit tousled with two men, you assume are his bodyguards, beside him. He reeks of tobacco, making you gag. You said nothing, but tried to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You were guessing he's with this butthole. Now where do you think you're going there, sweetheart? You alone? Yes, and I would pretty much prefer it to be alone. The man, however, did not listen. Why don't you come with me, and I'll show you how these games are played. He raised his hand to reach your shoulders. Before he could touch you, however, you kicked him between his legs. Facts. He doubled over and clinched his lower region, a groan escaping his lips. His goons were taken aback and rushed to help him. Now's my chance. Don't let her get away. Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you as you ran. You turned every corner you could, trying to make them lose you. But three against one is not a good matchup. Anyone? Please, someone help me! You pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. You cursed under your breath as you focused on running. All you can think about at that moment is to get out. You managed to get out of the arcade, but you can still clearly hear the men and his goons on your trail. You looked around and found a few toilet stalls. You rushed towards it and got in the stall, hurriedly opening and locking it as soon as you got in. The place stinks, 
but you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corners of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find her. The man's voice echoed. You try to think of something, and you thought of calling Soul. You quickly take out your phone. No signal. Are you for real right now? You can hear how aggressive they tore open each stall. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Anyone, please. There you are. No, please. You've been a very bad girl. But don't worry. You can make it up to me by doing me a favor. Forget you and your favors. I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do this the hard way. He forcibly grasped the edge of your uniform. Your eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. He quickly grabs hold of your wrist as you try to push him away. He's too strong. He forcibly lifts your uniform, revealing your stomach to him. I don't know why he wants to see that, weirdo. You're gonna give me a good time, little missy. N no! Get off! Let me go! The tears that were hanging by finally fell down your cheeks as you tried to stop him from going any further. The two large men with him held you down as you tried to struggle to no avail. Your vision is slowly being blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use. His grip is too strong and there is no one here to hear me. You close your eyes shut. Please just end quickly. What? Judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off of you as he was thrown to the side. You hear flesh hitting flesh. And another one. That's enough, soul. Not yet. That's enough. You broke his nose already. No. Soul. Oh my god. That's enough. Sleepy needs your help. <laughs> that, was, that was some really good uh, sound effects. It was a little intense. At the mention of your name, the familiar reddish-orange eyes went wide before turning to you. Sol quickly went to your side, his eyes wide with shock before crouching down and giving you a hug, his shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however. Too stunned to speak to what transpired before you. The man now lay still on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out on a random corner. You looked up and met with two familiar eyes of Hugo, but they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Hugo's eyes twitched as he sighed, trying to hide his visible irritation, but failing. He looked around at the mess Soul made before turning to check on you. He said nothing, hands in his pockets, while look, he looks down at you in Soul's embrace. <sighs> it's getting quite late. We should head home. Hugo taps Soul's shoulders, making the tall man bury his face further in between your neck before eventually letting go. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry. You aren't sure. But one thing for sure is that this man before you cried. He's a tortured artist. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you. I... Soul? I can't. I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't do that. You reach out to cup his cheek. He flinches at your touch. Why are you crying, my baby? Tears that he was trying to hold back is now flowing freely down his cheek. He eventually relaxed as he closed his eyes and leaned on to your hand as he held it. I didn't know what I'd do if... It's okay. Um, it's alright. Here. Beside you, Hugo extended his hand for you to take. You notice on his other hand is the same horse plush you tried to win back in the crane game. You took Hugo's hands as he helped you up. Sol stands up as well, but he backs away from you a few steps. We should head home. It's quite late after all. Both you and Sol didn't say anything, but not along. Hugo gives both of you a smile before walking away. So kept a firm hold on your hand, seemingly afraid to let you go. Hugo lets out a sigh. <sighs> I guess we can't go to that arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. If they ever come back.
I'll give them more than just a broken nose. You're pretty scary right now, Sol. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. Hugo shakes his head. He rummages through his pockets before handing Sol something. You didn't quite see what it was, but judging from the scowl on Sol's face, he doesn't like it. I told you, these don't work anymore. It's because you aren't taking it, you fool. Now take it tonight. Sol grumbled like a child who got scolded before taking whatever Hugo gave him and tucked it into his pocket. Anyway, your place is just around this corner. You should head back as soon as possible. I'll be taking Sleepy home. Sol's eyes narrowed from holding your hand to wrapping his arm around yours in a possessive hold as he leaned closer while still glaring at Hugo. No, I can walk her home. Clearly you're not in a good condition to fight again. I can fight again. There was something in Hugo's eyes that made your blood cold. The usual happy-go-lucky expression ha he had on his face was gone. Looking back at Sol, he seems unfazed at it, as if challenging him. H Hugo's right, Sol. You look beaten up. but sleepy. At least she knows her limit. Sol says nothing but clenches his fist. You notice a few red marks on his knuckles. Your eyes furrowed. I'm fine, sleepy. He tries to reassure you. You shook your head no. Well, for me, you aren't. You look up and gave him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine, Sol. Besides, I have Hugo to keep me safe. You go home first and get some rest. All right. Oh, Sol, wait, before you go. He paused in his tracks. He raised his brows in curiosity. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arms, you gently held it over to him, catching him by surprise. Sol, however, shook his head no and gave back the horse to you. His hands wrapped around your hands as you hold the ho toy horse. You won that. Plus, I don't deserve it. Not after that. But I won it for you. Consider this your reward for saving me. Sol stares at you in disbelief from your face to the stuffed horse in your hands. His hands were shaking as he tries to take the toy horse from your hands, brushing your fingers making him shiver. I'll take care of it, sleepy. I swear to you. He squeezed your hands, too hesitant to let you go, before his hold eventually slips as he lets go. With that, Sol takes his leave. He walks backwards, his eyes still on you, making sure you're in his sight before properly walking front. Hugo sighs, and you turn to face him. Well, ain't he a charmer? <laughs> Is it working? You raised an eyebrow at his question. Working what? charming you obviously don't worry this is a secret between you and me i i love hugo though i love both of them i oh, hugo though it's fine it's fine he says with a finger on his lips and a wink <laughs> you blushed <laughs> he's nice i owe him my life after that and and you chuckled thinking about the long-haired male he is handsome, I'll admit that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's with that smirk on your face? Oh, nothing. Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softened, taking you a bit aback as he looked down on the pavement before kicking a pebble. Have you ever liked someone, Sleepy? What's with this sudden question? Just answer. He paused as you thought for a second, and the first person that appeared to your mind was... Is definitely Soul. I love you, Crow. I love Crow, but he's more friend by... I haven't even given Crow a porch. I haven't given poor Crow a chance. I have not even given poor Crow a chance. So You thought of Soul. How he protected you, and how he didn't hesitate to beat those guys down. The pure terror in his eyes, how worried he was. You couldn't get it out of your head. He's been an amazing friend, even if he did beat those guys up nonstop. Is that a red flag? Maybe. Do you care? Maybe not. A smile made its way to your face, and it was enough of a confirmation for Hugo. Eventually, you arrived to the door of your apartment. You thanked Hugo for accompanying you. He gives you a smile, rubbing the back of his head. I'll see you tomorrow, sleepy. Sorry the day didn't go well. It's okay, Hugo, but we're going to have a proper plan next time. Of course. 
Hugo nodded, turning on his heels, his back facing you, ready to leave. But he remained still on his spot, sleepy. Yes? Be careful walking late at night, okay? You paused, turning your head slightly at him. There's been multiple cases of missing people lately. I suggest you go home with someone. Anyone. Just don't go alone. Alright? I understand. I feel like Hugo has like a secret. There's something about him. Like, Soul's crazy. But Hugo is crazy. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Missing people? When did that happen? No, when did it start? Oh, and one last thing, Sleepy. He turned his head around as he looked at your confused face. His eyes soft, but the light against him seems to be giving you a warning. <laughs> Hugo, that sounds like a good pie. I don't want this to be a good pie. <laughs> Take care of soul for me, okay? With that, he left. I know he's not romanceable, but this is an injustice. This is an injustice. <laughs> you entered your apartment, the lights dim as you groaned, searching for the light switch. Much better. You nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. You open your fridge and start rummaging around for something to eat. You sigh as nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday's dinner. You shrugged, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. You really don't feel like cooking or ordering either. You sigh as you close the door to your fridge as you made your way to your room. You place your school bag near your desk as you take a seat, skimming through your notes you've been taken for the day as you wrote down needed notes. You clicked your tongue as you tapped the blank notebook with the tip of your pen, going on with your silent staring contest with the blank paper before you. You let out a groan. Deciding to work later, you close your notebook and stood up, returning to your window, noticing it being slightly ajar. That's weird. I thought I closed this. You went near it to close it shut, but was met with a now broken lock. You cursed. I thought I replaced this two days ago. Maybe I shouldn't buy my locks online. You let out a groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into the living room. Your TV blared as you munched on some leftovers you got from the fridge, a movie currently playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about, starring her favorite lead actor. You kind of get what she's gushing about. The lead does look attractive. Blonde wavy hair with sharp eyes as pink as fuchsia. And you still can't remember the actor's name. You took out your phone as you start to search up the name of the actor when it suddenly changed and instead of the blonde actor on screen, a report comes instead with a banner below. Another missing person case? Is this what Hugo was talking about? A shiver went up your spine remembering the broken lock of your window back in your bedroom. Nuh-uh. Not tonight, sleepy. No scary thoughts for tonight. Turning off the TV, you went to your kitchen and grabbed something to drink. You opened your fridge, feeling the cold air hitting your face as you rummaged through. Taking out a pitcher of orange juice, you take a glass from the cupboards as you pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. You check the clock on the wall. 9.30 p.m. That late already, huh? You checked your front door and windows, seeing everything locked before grabbing your glass and finishing the last drops of the orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. Not dressed in your nightwear, you let out a last stretch, a yawn escaping from your lips. Getting in your bed sheets, you laid in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escapes your lips. You must be really tired, you thought, your eyes going half-lidded. But eventually, sleep took over. The moon was high in the sky. The night is quiet, save for a few late night cars. But that is not enough to wake the sleeping resident. <sighs> so I guess this is where his, uh, his crazy pops in, huh? Mm. Still broken, huh? 
You should be careful, Pumpkin. Clad in all black with a mask of the same color adorning his face, he slowly makes his way next to the sleeping figure, his reddish eyes bright, filled with adoring love. He reached out and strokes a finger against his beloved's cheek. Look at my sleepy sweetheart. Makes me wonder who supplies Hugo with those sleeping pills. He lets out a low chuckle as he leaned closer to Sleepy. Oh wait, that was cute, my sleepy sweetheart. That was my name. Uh, anyway, pulling down his mask, he leans forward, checking her face before continuing. He buries his face at the dip of her shoulders as he leaves the peck, and he takes a deep inhale. He shakes as if he took a whiff of a dangerous and addictive drug. <laughs> Immediately forgets about all the crazy things he is currently doing to my sleeping body. His bright eyes as he examined every feature of his soulmate's face as he gives Sleepy's cheek a kiss. Crap, you smell so good. Pardon me. He lifted her arm and watched as it flops down. <laughs> Deep in sleep, like Sleeping Beauty. He nibbles her neck, earning a soft whimper from the sleeping individual. He just chuckled, quite ticklish, aren't you? And he kept going. He kissed and laughed at the same spot, to the point a mark started to form. Those filthy scums think they can touch you. His eyes slanted in anger, his grip on the edge of the bed tightens as he wrinkles the sheets, his breathing heavy. You are mine. No one else. You belong to me. If I ever see those bastards again, I'll kill them. Jesus. Tucking a loose strand away from Sleepy's face, he gives her a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Sleepy's lips. A shiver ran right down his spine at the contact, and as much as he would like to stay a bit longer, his time is due. He backs away as he covered his face once again with the face mask. He walked towards the ajar window, turning back one last time. Sorry about the window, pumpkin. I shouldn't like the way he calls us pumpkin. <laughs> I can be a pumpkin if he wants. Sorry about the window, pumpkin. I'll make it up to you someday. He carefully opens the window again, and with that, he's gone. This poor baby definitely has like some type of like insomnia that makes him crazy and you cannot tell me otherwise. Or he has past life dreams that literally drive him insane. Like and he just can't rest. But I love him and that's all that matters. Okay, this time we're going to the movies with Hugo, the love of my life. Let's go watch the movie. Hugo gives you a bright smile. Heck yeah, I knew you were a trooper sleepy. Come on, let's go grab some tickets and snacks. Do you want popcorn or something else? The shorter male went along ahead towards the movie theater with you coming along, following up behind him. Soul clicked his tongue, shoving his hands in his pocket as he followed along behind you. Hugo took notice of this and raised an eyebrow. Oh, I thought you weren't interested in the movie, Sonny Boy. Maybe you're right. It does look interesting. Stop making it skip. Let's go. Soul takes hold of your wrist and drags you away from Hugo into the movie theater. What? Hey! Come back here, I'm talking to you! Soul went ahead to the counter and bought tickets for the three of you. Soul turned around and gave one ticket to you. Your fingers brushed with his, causing him to blush. Finally caught up to you two, Hugo pouted as he crossed his arms looking at Soul. I thought the tickets were on you, Hugo. It is, but guess it's on Soul now. Not that I'm complaining or anything. But this is supposed to be my treat. Oh well, the food's still on me. Wait right here. Hugo scurried off to the food booth, leaving you and Sol one last time. You walk towards the now showing pictures, examining the poster. Sherlock Holmes, huh? Hugo's into detective movies? You turn to ask Sol. He placed a hand on his hip as he checked the poster next to you. You can say that. He aspires to be one. It's quite charming of him, and Sherlock Holmes is his inspiration? Just one of them. I see. How about you, Sol? What's your favorite genre? He raised an eyebrow at you, placing a finger on his chin as he looked up, staring at the ceiling. I like supernatural horror and thriller. 
along with the tales of the Headless Horseman or those original fairy tales by the Grimm's Brothers. Ah, those all sound so gruesome. I bet you feel weirded out by it. Uh, what do you mean? I actually enjoy those. They're not weird. I really like supernatural things, but I am an absolute chicken. So like, I like them. I like them, but I, I don't know. What do you mean? I actually enjoy those as well. Really now? Of course I do. I think they're very interesting and I love the thrill they give. Soul stares at you and all before a smile breaks out onto his face. Then maybe we can watch one together. Yeah. I'm back! I love Hugo. Hugo's familiar voice was heard. You turned around and saw him walking towards the both of you. Two large bags filled with popcorn, one on each arm, and a large cup being held. Oh, let me... You said, taking one bag from Hugo's arm. He thanks you for the help. I've got the snacks. Hope you like popcorn, Sleepy. He then turns to Sol. Come on, let's go in before the movie starts. Sol nods as you and Hugo follow him towards the entrance of the movie theater. He looks so jealous. This was supposed to be our little date. He hands out the three tickets, then the three of you enter. Ooh, it's packed. This isn't it. This piece wants you to believe it's the ultimate evidence for this case, when in fact... You were halfway through the movie, the bag of popcorn halfway finished. You looked at the blue-haired bale on your left as his gaze transfixed on the large screen before you. Hugo during the beginning of the film was really giddy, but now he was silent, seemingly engrossed with the scene happening in the movie. His hand goes into autopilot as he munches on each bite of popcorn. To your right, Sol, surprisingly, was also too engrossed in the movie before him. You need to piss. You've been holding it in for a while since you don't want to miss out on the important seas, but Mother of Nature is knocking so hard on your door. You tap Sol's shoulder. He turned his attention to you. You need something? I need to go to the comfort room. Would you like me to accompany you? No, it's fine. Just enjoy the movie. Sol gave you a nod, and you took it as a signal to stand up from your seat, ducking down, making sure not to block the scene for the viewers at the back as you speed walk towards the theater's comfort room. Ooh, ginger neutral bathrooms. Jeez, and it was already getting interesting, too. I'll probably ask Hugo what happened when I was gone. Well, time to head back. The forceful opening of the door startled you. A few grunts were heard and the shuffling of feet as if they were in a struggle. You went quiet. You better speak the heck up or else. I, I don't know what you're talking about. How many times do I have to tell you? Bull crap. Uh, oh. Your eyes widened as your breathing stopped. You quietly but quickly went to the nearest toilet stall. What's going on? A fight? In the cinema out of all places? Whatever is going on by the door is clearly something you don't want to get involved with. Just tell us who the traitor is that you're in cahoots with and I'll let you on. Again! I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, I have no choice. Oh, not the Glock. <laughs> you hear the sound of the light bulb being popped again with a portion of the room comfort room's light going dim only half of the room is now lit up please i don't know i swear i'm gonna give you one last chance buddy a little shuffling was heard the rough voice seemed to whisper something you cannot hear then you hear breathing as it gets shorter and heavier he's here I swear, just look around. You're bound to find him here. Please don't kill me. Maybe the gun's too merciful. N no! Your nose caught something. It stings as it fills the air, the edges of your eyes watering. Then you felt something wet hitting the tip of your shoes. You look down and your eyes widen blood oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap someone just got killed 
and the body is right in front of your stall. Hmm. Is someone else there? Crap, did he hear me? Well, well, well. Seems like we have a lost lamb on our shoulders. Then you hear the stall one block away from you, roughly opened. Hmm, not here, huh? Come on, little lamb. Don't try to hide. Crap, I need to do something. You quickly look around, trying to find a way to escape, but there is nothing but a small rectangular window just above the toilet. You can try to pry it open and call for help. I feel like I'm getting closer to you. He's about to open my stall. What should I do? Uh, oh no, this is timed! Ah! <laughs> what should I do? Uh, go through the window, hold on the door, hold on to the door. Ah! <laughs> All you can do is stay quiet and hold your breath as you close your eyes. Please, please, please. The door to your stall slowly opened. You can feel the intimidating presence of the man. I don't want to die. There you are. I don't want to die. 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 Uh. Oh. Then you felt a hand coming to touch your hair. You flinched. You slowly backed away, your legs shaking as you still refused to open your eyes. Your arms wrapped around you. Sleepy. It's okay. You hear that all too familiar voice. I'm here, sleepy. It's all right. Jesus Christ, <laughs> look at that bathroom. <laughs> Before you was Sol. Right behind him was Hugo. Both of their expressions were filled with worry. But your focus was on the splattered blood across the walls. Hugo notices this and tries his best in blocking the view. Sol's hands then went up to reach out to you. But he stopped midway, afraid as if he'll burn you. Even without thinking, you quickly wrap your arms around Sol your shoulders shaking as you bury your face in his chest. Sol took this as a sign and gently wrapped his big arms around you, a hand coming to caress your hair, trying to comfort you as you shook in his hold. Can we go out, please? Without much of a word, Sol escorted you out from the scene before you, his hold tight and secured around your shoulders. He gives Hugo a look, and the shorter male just sighed, waving his friend away with a fanning motion. I'll take care of it. You and Sol left. Hugo lets out an irritated as he looks down at the two bodies on the ground. God, what a pain in the butt. Oh, Hugo. The sky is now dark, indicating it's near night. You finally go out of the movie. You look down and stared at your shoes. Noticing a few splatters of blood, you gripped Sol's arm. He took notice and looked at your shoes, seeing the blood. He kneeled down on one knee and took out his handkerchief. N no, it's all right. Doubt it. He is the sask master. He wiped the blood off of your shoes before folding his handkerchief and shoving it deep into his pockets. He looked at your disheveled look. Let me ask you again. Are you all right, Sleepy? Hi. No. How? Why? You asked no one. The terrifying experience kept repeating in your mind. So broke your trail of thought by placing his large hand on top of your head. You looked up at him, and he gave you a soft, reassuring smile. His hand now off of your head. Don't think about it anymore. What matters is, is that you were here with me. Okay. You look around and notice that Hugo wasn't around. Wh where's Hugo? He's got it covered. You don't need to worry about him. How about I walk you home? Huh? Y you know, to keep you safe. <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, I'll keep you company. I'll keep you safe. Do you trust me? I... I trust you. Then let me take care of you. So this is not the time to be rizzing me up. Oh my god, you stress me out. In the best way, though. Has anybody seen Sign of Affection? You know Itsuomi. He is like the most dangerous type of person for me. Because I, I can't... I can't take just 
I can't straight just too sure if you're too straightforward and your wrist is too strong I'll break oh god just take take all my money then let me take care of you soul gently takes hold of your hand and wraps it around his larger one his gaze never leaving yours a bright smile on his face lead the way then yes daddy you felt safe safe with someone safe with soul the walk back to your apartment was quiet, save for the few nightly bugs making a few hums then and there. Soul's hand is still wrapped around yours. He's warm. You couldn't help but steal a few glances at Soul, and he looks back at you. He said nothing, but the more he stared at you, the more longing his eyes were giving. <laughs> These are so yummy. Um, he gives you another one of his bright smiles. He squeezes your hand. You squeeze back, making him chuckle. What is it? Nothing. Your hand feels cold. Oh my god, he is just laying it on thick, and I can't let me fix that. <laughs> Mom, come get me. I'm scared. Let me fix that. He hummed as he raised the hand that he's holding. There. Now it feels warmer. He teased, a blush of his own appearing on his face. What? I... That's not how you warm hands up. Is that so? I'd love to see how you do it. Soul! He just laughed at you, his face still red as you playfully hit his side. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, eventually, your walk came to an end, and you're met with the front door of your apartment. You let go of the hand Sol was holding. He nearly reached out to keep his hold, but he stopped himself. You turn to face him. W well, this is my place. Oh. I'll see you tomorrow, then? Uh, of, of course, but... We don't have class tomorrow, though. That's alright. Maybe we can hang out after classes to continue on the project. Can we do it at your place? I'll keep your word for it, then. You turn to face your apartment's front door, taking out your keys and finding the one you need. Before you inserted the key to your apartment, you turn your head to look at Soul's tall figure still unmoving from his position. He's like, invite me in, and I'm like, invite him in. Thank you for today, I really owe you one. He paused, then his shoulders relaxed. Don't worry about it. Just know that you can count on me. Unlocking the front door, you fully turned around to give Sol one last wave with a smile on your face. He returned with his own smile before walking towards the exit. He didn't have to break in, because I would've just invited him. Anywho going ticklish aren't you and he kept going kissed and left at the same spot to the point a mark started to form our time today isn't enough it's never enough i want more of you i want to be with you every waking day <laughs> all right you could do that you don't have to break into my apartment though you can just ask like i will let you we can do this his gaze went from hurt to desperate his focus still on the figure sleeping before them if only you knew how much i crave your attention every day it hurts so please let me tucking a loose strand away from sleepy's face he gives her a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Sleepy's lips. A shiver runs down his spine at the contact. And as much as he would like to stay a bit longer, his time is due. You really caused me trouble today. So it was you? You traitor. What? My gun. Huh. <laughs> Who would have thought? Our sweet doggie is biting their master's hand. Though, not gonna lie, we should have seen this coming. You're talking too much. You haven't even- 
Huh. Huh. Crap. They're slowly figuring me out. I don't think I can make it for the next few days. Sunny. You've done enough for me, I think. This is the end of our deal. I'm on strike. Nothing better better happen to Hugo. Why do I always fall for the characters who exist for the plot? Okay, this one is, we're gonna say, I'm fine. We're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, don't worry about it. You say that, but your voice is clearly betraying you. Sol isn't convinced, and said he kept giving me a worried look. He sighs before shaking his head. All right, he's ready to panic again. Let's do it. This time, let's try to go through the window. Go through the window! Without much thought, you quickly stepped on the toilet seat and pried open the small rectangular window. It won't budge. Then you hear your stall open. And there you see a tall man, roughly six foot eight. Jesus! He is dressed in all black, black leather gloves adorning his hands, and in one of them is a gun with a silencer attached to it. And below him is the bloody body of another man. That must be the meek-voiced man you heard. Well, hello there, little missy. You seem quite lost there. Sadly, I can't let any witnesses go loose. Please don't. He, however, did not listen to your pleas. He takes his gun as he reloaded it with a click. I'm going to freaking die. Okay. They're not weird. I think they're unique. Also, that's your charm. He said with a wink, so blushed and looked away, rubbing his wrist to calm himself down. I wouldn't mind a try and watched one, though. Then I'd love to recommend some for you. Of course. That would be such an honor. I can't afford to skip this one. Although the idea of skipping seems thrilling, you couldn't afford to skip this one. Who knows what important projects your teacher is going to throw at you, and you're going to end up behind just because of skipping one class. Thanks for the offer, you two, but I can't afford to miss this one. Hugo's shoulders slumped down, quite disappointed. That's all right. Maybe we can hang out next time then. Sol turns to you. Would you like me to accompany you to your next class? Of course, I'd appreciate that, Sol. I'll see you in the usual spot, Sol. Sol nods at Hugo before the said male walks away, waving off as he leaves. You and Sol walk through the hallway towards your next class's classroom. You couldn't help but check on Sol. He seems nervous. You look down and see that his hand is shaking. Riz him up! He riz him up! It's payback. Reaching to take his hand, you gently wrap your hand around his. His hand stopped shaking, but it went stiff before he eventually relaxed and intertwined his fingers with yours. This makes you smile. The walk was silent, but no words needed to be said to see the growing smile on his face cutie. He finally reached the front of the classroom door. You peeked inside through the door's window and saw Crow in his usual seat already. You turned your attention back to Sol. Thank you for escorting me to class, Sol. Oh, it's not a problem. His tiny smile didn't last long on his face, however. His shoulders sunk down. Though, I could have wished you could come with us. Maybe next time, Sol. Maybe we can hang out on a weekend or on a free schedule? Mm, sure. His words contradicted his expression as it lacks enthusiasm. Just then, the door to your classroom opened, and there you met eyes with Crow. Crow's eyes slid up once he saw you. There you are, Sleepy. Just in time for the next clip. Oh? He was about to greet you, but felt Sol's present beside him. And who might this fellow be? A classmate of yours? You can say that. Crow, this is Sol. He's from my art class. Sol, this is Crow. A pleasure to meet you, Sol. Crow extended his hand out for Sol to shake. 
Sol just stared at it. Sol shake his hand to be a good noodle. A few awkward seconds passed by before he eventually took Crow's hand. Sol, however, wasn't regulating his strength as he gripped Crow's hands with too much strength. Crow winced from the pressure but didn't say anything before Sol eventually let go of his hand. Sol then turned to you. I should be going now, sleepy. I'll see you soon. Kinda wished you would have come with. He sighed, reaching out to tuck a li Oh, he is not playing. You know what? Let me give Crow a chance. Cause like, look at him. He's so cute. He's so cute, but like... He was a Nemo boy. He said, man, no, I mean, yo. He sighed, reaching out to tuck a loose strand of hair away from your face, earning him a small blush from you. Sol turned on his heel and walked off. You looked at his retreating figure before Crow eventually tapped your shoulder. We should get going. With one last glance at Sol's retreating figure, you turned around and got inside the classroom. <sighs> Alright y'all. I'm tired. I am sleepy. I am sleepy. I'm in Tommy Pickles where uh... It's time to get my juice box, my blankie, and go night night. <laughs> so what did we learn? Sleepy is in love with Hugo terribly, but she also has a very, 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 very weak spot for um, Soul. And we're working on we're working on Crow because he did get me a few times. He did get me a few times. He's very sweet. Um, I guess I like intense. Anyway. Yes, I only finished the, I only finished all of the stuff that was mainly concerning Soul as a love interest. So next video, I am going to do all of Crows. And I'm not sad that Hugo is either going to die and or we will not be able to get him as a love interest, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. I hope you have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are, and that you stay sleepy and stay cozy and stay oh so warm and have good feelings for the next day or today. And I will see you next time. Bye!